All right, I'm going to show you how to configure the Network Information Service, NIS, for user authentication. So I have a server here, um, server.example.com, and the first thing I need to do is make sure I have all of the right software. So I can use the yum command, install um, YP serve. This is what I really need, but in addition to installing YP serve, I'm going to also install YP tools and YP bind. And these will download um, and install. Once I have them installed, um, I can start configuring YP serve. YP serve and NIS are really the same service. Originally it was called Yellow Pages, and um, apparently. Someone wasn't happy with that, so they had to change the name. So what I want to do is make sure that my NIS domain is set correctly, and I can use the NIS domain command and tell it my domain is example.com. Oops, NIS domain name. All right, so now my NIS domain name is set to example.com. I want to make sure it kind of sticks. And so I'm going to do nano and edit my etc sysconfig network file. And in this file, I am going to add my NIS domain. Domain equals example.com. Also, um, the YP service, the NAS service, has a habit of jumping around different ports. We want to get it fixed at a certain port so it doesn't move around. So I'm going to do a YP serve args command and tell it that we want to pass in a port number of 834. It's a nice number, 834. All right, so I exit out. And we are good right there. Once I have that done, the next thing that I need to do is to configure the YP service. And that is in the user lib YP directory. However, I am using a 64 bit machine, so instead of being lib, it's lib 64 for me. And that can be confusing if you're not using 64, just take out the 64. YP yp init and i'm going to pass it the minus m option to create my configuration it asked me to um, pass any additional host and so um, all i'm doing is just my my server which is server.example.com and i'm done so i press Control d and save it and it goes through and we're good um, it has all these little errors that pop up all over the place, and that's great, um, but it creates it. All right. Um, okay. Next thing I want to do is make sure my services are running. So systemctl, and I want to start the RPC bind service. If it's not already there, I need to start it. Um, I also want to make sure it's running when I boot, so I enable it. I want to make sure that the YP server is also running, so start YP serve. And I want to make sure that it's running at boot time, so I enable it. So it creates some log link, it's ready to go. All right, the next thing I want to do is take care of the firewall. Now, the YP service is not in the firewall right now, and I want to make sure it's there. Um, so I'm going to create a service. I don't like putting in just the port number. I could just add the port numbers, but I want to add a service to make it much easier. And the, the firewall D services are in the user lib firewall D services directory. So I'm actually going to create a file called user lib firewall D, and it's not lib64, it's just regular lib. 
um, services, and it's going to be yb-serve.xml. So I'm going to create this file, and it's an XML file, so the first thing I do is tell it that it's XML, and the version is 1.0, and the encoding is the UTF-8. Coding. All right, inside of this file, now I have a service. Uh, create and open, open and close the service tags. Inside the service tags, uh, tap it a little bit, go in a little bit, and do a short description. And this is going to be my YP serve. And I'll do lowercase. YP serve. It doesn't really matter what you type here. You just want to make sure you have something. And then um, the YP serve has um, a port protocol, which is my TCP protocol, and my port number, which is 834. All right. And I also want to do that for UDP. Same thing. UDP port equals 834. Alright, so this service definition will then allow a service to be created when I restart my firewall. So I exit out and do a system CTL restart on firewall D. It reloads the firewall and now I can add the firewall rules to the firewall. So the first one I want to make sure is I want to make sure the RPC bind service is added to the firewall. So do firewall CMD add service equals RPC dash bind. That's the name of the service. It's already there. Um, I would also want to make sure it's in the. I mean, it will be it already in the permanent. But to add it, I would type that command in right there. Per, whoops, it's a permanent spell with an E. Permanent. All right, and it's already there. Now I want to add the YP serve service that I just, just created. So I do firewall cmd add add. Can't type the add service equals YP serve. And then I want to make sure that's permanent. So I make it permanent. All right. So now I have taken care of the server. It should be exporting the data over to any clients that are connecting up to it. At this point, it's sometimes usually a good idea to set up your server as a client so you can test things to make sure things are working properly on your server. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go directly to the client. <clears throat> So on the client, I want to install some software as well. So I'm going to install the YP tools and I'm going to install the YP bind software. And get them fully installed. And the next thing I want to do is I also want to set my NAS domain name as well so that it's, it's not going to be a problem. NAS domain name. And that's example.com. I could also go into the um, sysconfig network file and add that NAS domain name. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Um, sysconfig work and I will put my NIS domain equals example.com. All right, now that I have that set, I'm going to configure my machine to use the server for authentication. So that's AUTH config dash TUI. So the auth config 
text user line interface thing. I'm going to check spacebar on NIS and go down to next. And I have to tell it my server is going to be server.example.com. And I click OK. And now it has set my machine to use the server for authentication. However, I don't have the RBC bind service necessarily running, and I need to make sure the YP bind service is also running. So I do a system CTL start R RPC bind. Make sure that's running. That one helps me to get uh, the connection with the YP ser service working because it uses the communication between the two. And I want to make sure that is running on boot time as well. So I'm going to enable it. And now I also want to start the YP bind service. And I'm going to enable that as well. At this point, I should be fully connected and ready to go. And I can test it by using one of the YP tools, YP cat, P-A-S-S-W-D. And this will tell me if my password for a user is being exported across. And you can see that there is, in fact, a user being exported across. And there you go. That's how you set it up and configure NIS for authentication.